Hill Wednesday, calling it a very good day for himself and fellow Republicans. Mueller investigated Russian interference into the 2016 election and alleged obstruction of justice by Trump. He said the investigation did not exonerate Trump of obstructing justice by trying to thwart the probe. The U.S. government intends to resume capital punishment after a 16-year hiatus. The Justice Department announced on Thursday there are plans to execute five death row inmates convicted of murder later this year. AP's Mike Gracia has more. The Justice Department has announced the executions of federal death row inmates will resume later this year. It will be the first time federal executions have been carried out since 2003. In 2014, President Barack Obama ordered a Justice Department review of capital punishment and issues related to lethal injection drugs. The department says the Bureau of Prisons has completed the review and executions can resume. The department says five inmates will be executed starting in December. Mike Gracia, Washington. The inmates will be put to death using the drug pentobarbital, and the United States is the only Western country where executions still take place. Tunisian Parliament Speaker Mohamed Anasour was sworn in as interim president of Tunisia on Thursday. His swearing in was hours after the death of President Baji Kaid Essebsi. Essebsi helped guide the North African country's transition to democracy. After the 20 election, 2011 revolution, a state funeral for Essebsi will be held on Saturday. Up to 150 migrants are missing and feared drowned after a boat capsized off the, off the coast of Libya on Thursday. This will be the largest shipwreck on the Mediterranean Sea this year. This is VOA News. A series of attacks rocked Afghanistan on Thursday, killing dozens of people. Fifty-eight are dead, including 38 members of Afghan security forces. Taliban militants stormed security checkpoints in Takar province, while multiple bombs rocked capital Kabul and Jalalabad. A Ministry of Interior spokesman said a suicide bomber on a motorcycle targeted a minibus in Kabul, carrying the staff of the Ministry of Mines and Petroleum as they were on their way to work Thursday morning. The local branch of the Islamic State terror group took responsibility for the attacks on the minibus. The Taliban claimed responsibility for the third attack in Kabul, in which they claimed they targeted foreign invaders. Thousands of Puerto Ricans celebrated into the night after embattled Governor Ricardo Rosseo announced his resignation after days of massive street protests. The public fury that led to the governor's resignation erupted nearly two weeks ago, after an investigative journalism group published nearly 900 pages of online group chats between Rosseo and several top aides. The chats included the homophobic and misogynistic comments about Rosseo's political opponents and disdainful comments about victims of Hurricane Maria, which devastated the island in 2017. Joey Cancel, a Miami resident who's originally from Puerto Rico, said people are excited that the governor has finally resigned after two weeks of protests. It's been a little bit of uncertainty and tension, but last night at midnight, it's all about celebration. Finally, we are arriving to a place where we can start seeing the light at the end of the tunnel. Sixteen Marines at Southern California's Camp Pendleton were called out of battalion formation and what military officials are calling a mass arrest involving human smuggling. AP correspondent Jennifer King reports. On July 3rd, two Camp Pendleton-based Marines were arrested and accused of transporting undocumented immigrants. U.S. Border Patrol agents reportedly saw three immigrants jump into the Marines' car on Interstate 8 north of the border near Tecate. According to a federal complaint, the undocumented immigrants told agents they had agreed to pay the Marines $8,000 to take them north from the border to Los Angeles. Now officials say they've arrested 16 more Marines following an investigation into human smuggling. Another eight are being questioned about alleged involvement in drug offenses as part of a separate investigation. I'm Jennifer King. North Korea fired two missiles off its east coast on Thursday. The launch comes as Pyongyang complains about upcoming U.S.-South Korean military exercises. While analysts say the launch probably will not derail nuclear talks, it underscores the United States' inability to move those talks forward. The launch comes less than a month after President Trump met Kim Jong-un at the demilitarized zone, a meeting where many White House officials described as a possible game changer. I'm Marissa Melton. This is VOA News.